This is the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio, the second edition. It's new and I'm excited to check it out because at a video in the past, I checked out the first version and the first version was really neat to me. It was just a bit underpowered for the typical work that I do. This type of device is created for the creators that are editing photos and video and creating, whether it be with a pen, a stylus, or with a mouse or a trackpad. This is a very versatile device, and one of the reasons that I thought it was pretty amazing was because of the convertible screen that folds down just like so, and now I have an extremely powerful tablet. Most tablets that have touchscreens and can fold down like this do not have a ton of performance, and Microsoft created this line so that creators could have a lot of performance. Now, the Microsoft Slim Pin slides right down here and charges wirelessly. Magnet holds it in place. Probably the strongest magnet on any device that I have felt as far as attachable pins go. The new Slim Pin is slim. It is not round, which does make it a little bit of a challenge to hold on to, but it's not the end of the world. I'm excited about this device because they, of course, have the latest generation CPU and the 4000 series, specifically the 4060 RTX graphics card. And so for me, I need that kind of performance because whether I'm editing photos and I want that process to go quickly or I'm rendering out video, and of course I want that process to go fast, I need the performance. And in a laptop like this, I'm hoping for the best performance. So for the last couple of weeks, I've spent time utilizing this laptop as my main laptop for things as simple as web browsing and building websites to editing large batches of photos and editing videos for a channel like this and even my photography channel as well. So most of the time I'm not going to be in this convertible mode. But what I do like about having this mode is when I want to do some work on a photo and use the pen, I can pinch and zoom in and get in really close on my photo and I can use brushes and different stuff like that on the photo and then use the pen. Of course, sometimes you can accidentally touch with your finger as you're moving things around, but it's really nice to be able to make adjustments and use the pen and it is very responsive and everything is really fast. I just, I like the experience of being able to use a pen. It's not gonna be something I use every time, but more specifically when I'm in Photoshop and I'm using the brush to do touch up work, it's definitely nice to have a pen and a tablet in order to do that and still have the performance so that I can get things done fast. So while I'm not gonna be a daily user of the pen, I'm excited to have the pen and to have this convertible type of device so that I can utilize it for that type of work. Most of the time, I'm gonna be using it as a laptop. And as a laptop, this is great, but it is a little bit heavy and it's noticeable. This device is rather thick and a bit cumbersome to lug around, but most laptops that have large graphics cards and tons of performance are gonna have those issues. Now, a 4060 is not the best graphics card that you can get in a Windows laptop, but for a Windows laptop that has the features that this one does, it's pretty much what you can expect. Now, as far as specs go, I usually go with the most spec'd out version that I can get. I know a lot of people like the base model as something to compare with, but I want the most performance performance that I can get. And so I went with the 13th gen i7. This is the 2.9 gigahertz. It's the 13700. This has 64 gigs of RAM. And as I've already mentioned, it has the RTX 4060. So this device has as much performance as you can put in it. So how does it perform? Well, I ran Geekbench scores and you can see my Geekbench account here. I've got the laptop studio. I ran it in two different configurations. I ran it plugged into power and disconnected from power, but with a 100% battery. You can see here that plugged into power, we had a single core score of 1631 and a multi-score of 9,629. Now, if I unplugged it from power, we had 1315 and 6129. So it definitely decreases in performance quite a bit, a lot, I would say, when you are connected to battery. That is very typical on Windows devices. It doesn't matter who makes the Windows device. When you disconnect it from power, there's gonna be a decrease there. Now, if we look at the compute score, you can see the compute score actually doesn't suffer as bad. And that's good for me because when I am wanting to render out a video and I can't be plugged into power for whatever reason, I want to maintain as much performance as I can. So you can see here, plugged into power, we had 83,564 and disconnected from power, 80,902. That's not too bad at all. If we look at past devices here, such as my MacBook Pro, it actually performs significantly higher 
than my MacBook Pro, which is an M1 Max, not the M2, which is the current version. But the M1 Max is just shy of 70,000. And so that's 10,000, uh, 11,000 higher of a score. But does that actually translate into better performance as far as rendering goes in the software. Now, my experiences were that this device, yes, it runs well, but it does not run as well as my Mac does. And that was unfortunate because my Mac is an M1 Max. I bought that when it was brand new. And so it's a few years old now. And this is a brand new device with a 13th gen CPU, and it didn't perform nearly as well as the Mac. And I tried this in a couple of different ways just to make sure. I had a video process project that was just shy of a 20 minute long video. And I also had a couple of reels for Instagram or YouTube shorts that I was exporting as well. First, I went to export the YouTube shorts, which are like less than 60 seconds long. The first thing I noticed is that it took two and a half or so minutes to render those out. I knew that was pretty slow because typically on my Mac, I'm rendering out at least at two times the speed of the actual video. So say the video is 60 seconds, usually takes about 30 seconds. Say the video is 20 minutes, it usually takes a little bit less than 10 minutes. And that's what I was noticing when I was using this device is that it was rendering more closer to real time or maybe even slower than real time. That 20 minute video that I was rendering out took longer than 20 minutes and that was really hard to sit through and wait. I wanted to cancel and not even continue the test because it was taking so long to render out the video. I tried it connected to an external hard drive. I tried it on the internal hard drive. I made sure that uh, the entire video was pre-rendered. Nothing changed how that video was rendering. And also with the reels, I tried rendering out in different formats just to see if I could change things and figure out what the issue was because this should not be that slow at rendering in Premiere Pro. Now I am using the latest version of Premiere that I think just came out here in the uh, early part of October, 2023. And I would assume that that new version would work well with 13th gen CPUs and the RTX 4060. There shouldn't be any issues there. I made sure all the software updates were run on this device. So there's no excuses that it should have had for slow performance, especially in comparison to a MacBook Pro that is several years old. So that was a major concern for me is that the performance just wasn't what I expected. I also did some gaming on this device because it has an RTX 4060. And so why not do some gaming? One of the things that I noticed when I was rendering video and then once again when I was gaming is just how hot the device gets and how much heat it blows out. And the fans that are in this laptop are rather powerful. It's blowing out and exhausting a lot of heat. And so if you are utilizing this with a mouse and you have your hand right here, your hand's gonna get pretty warm with that exhaust blowing out onto your hand. I noticed that while I was gaming, there was some papers and a $5 bill sitting off camera. And I noticed that it was moving and it was actually the fan blowing so much air, so powerful that fan is that it was blowing and making the $5 bill move. And I thought it was really interesting because I think it's been a long time since I have utilized a laptop that's needed to spin fans up that high in an attempt to dissipate that much heat in order to just do nominal tasks. And to me, that's kind of unfortunate because a device like this, that's supposed to be a laptop that is made out of some nice aluminum and is a very sturdy device should not be heating up like that and dealing with so much heat that it has to push out of the device. I just haven't experienced that. I didn't experience it with the first version of this laptop, and I haven't experienced that with other versions as well. I'd give this laptop the benefit of the doubt if it was performing extremely well, but it just simply isn't performing that well. When I loaded up Fortnite and played some Fortnite, which I never do anymore, but it's a good measuring stick for performance, I was never really able to get much higher than 60, 70 frames per second. A lot of times it was dipping down into the 40s, which I I thought was pretty bad. A device like this should not be performing that bad with a game that's really optimized as good as Fortnite is. I've gotten better than 40 frames per second on other devices. So that really kind of frustrated me with this device. And just in case you're wondering, this is not a pre-production device. This is not a device that Microsoft sent me. I purchased this laptop from the Microsoft store myself. So it came in retail form, just like anybody else would get it. I ran all the software updates on it, made sure everything is up to date before running any of these tests. And so these are things that concern me. 
first of all, in my rendering test, it was relatively slow. In my photo export test, it was okay. It just was not as fast as I would have liked it to be. And when utilizing games, it definitely seemed to be pretty slow. Even though I'm not going to play games that often, I would expect a device like this to perform better than it was. So I, I don't want to make this video about pooping all over this laptop because it is pretty amazing. It is a masterpiece, really. It's beautiful. It's a nice looking device. I mean, here's all of those, the vents all along the side that I was talking about, but it seems like most of the heat comes out of this half here. And uh, of course, on the other side, you've got the same configuration as far as fans go. It is a beautiful device. It's pretty amazing. But for me, it's just not performing, and I don't know what else to say about that. The scores that I got out of Geekbench seemed pretty good, but that did not reflect in actual real-life usage when I tried to use this device for work. Lastly, let's just walk around the device. Got a USB Type-A port, two USB Type-C ports on this side, and that is all of the ports. We've got nothing on the back. We've got the proprietary connection that Microsoft uses on their Surface devices here for charging. We've got a headphone jack and we have a micro SD card slot here as well. I really would have liked to see a full-size SD card slot in this laptop because I do use micro SD cards in my drones and GoPros, but primarily I'm using bigger cameras uh, like Sony cameras that utilize SD cards, and that would have been much more useful, especially in a creative device such as this. I don't think I would recommend the spec'd out version to anybody. If you're wanting to buy one of these and get the 4060 for that rendering performance, I, I wouldn't recommend it because I haven't seen it. I'm not experiencing the performance that I would have expected out of this device. I've tried several different Premiere Pro projects now as well, even Premiere Pro projects that I've created in the device just to make sure that there was nothing weird that came over from a project that I originally created on a Mac. And so with that said, it's just, it's not performing the way that I would have liked it. And I'll be curious to check out the Surface Laptop, which I also have here. The Surface Laptop is uh, definitely not a device that has a ton of performance, but it is extremely slim and a nice lightweight device, very nicely built. And I want to see how it performs because that might be the Windows device for me. Something that I can't really do much heavy lifting on, but has Windows 11, gets the job done, and is lightweight, slim, and has decent performance because I know it's got the 13th gen CPU in it. And from my past experiences, that laptop should do pretty well. Not as good as this laptop, but this laptop should be doing better. So I don't know what to say as far as this laptop goes. I was super excited and had extremely high expectations for it because my experiences with the last version was pretty good considering it was a year old when I tried it. But if I can't get at least near the rendering performance out of my two-year-old MacBook Pro on a device here in 2023 that has an RTX 4060 in it, then I have to say it's probably not worth the money. If you're wanting a device that has the convertible screen, the touchscreen, the pen, all of that good stuff, which this device has, because it's designed for creators, I would definitely go with the base model. And if you need to do heavier lifting, use something else like a desktop computer, because this device just does not seem to pack the punch that I hoped that it would. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I've got links in the description below so you can check out the different configurations and the pricing on this device. For me, I really wish that this had performed better because I was really excited for it. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and we'll see you back in another one soon. Take care.